Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, July the 20th. I'm Eric Wilkinson, and yes, you very well may recognize me from mainstream media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environments, and how that impacts the markets with my market analysis. And I do the same thing in these daily market commentaries, but I layer on top of it some option strategies that I find on any given day based on the market analysis that we come up with and implement that so that we can improve increase our yield in our portfolio. It's one of the best ways to increase that overall yield rather than just going out there and buying an index. We can start trading some options and uh, and stick some money in our pocket, hopefully. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with the economic data. It's a Monday. There's really nothing to see here. It's all about the weekend, and uh, it seems like we're seeing coronavirus spike a little bit more, Florida, uh, one of the hot spots, supposedly here in Arizona as well. Well, it seems like the market's kind of brushing that off as we go on throughout the day. They're kind of thinking that maybe this might be just the new normal. Plus, there's some uh, uh, positive news coming out of Pfizer that they may have some virus breakthroughs coming down the pipe. So, uh, or pike, I should say. So, keep your eyes out for news from Pfizer on that vaccine that they're working on. They think that they found some antibodies that uh, can uh, be used for a virus, or for, sorry, a vaccine. All right, without further ado, let's get on with the economic, or sorry, the uh, overall market with the market analysis, enough of all the other stuff. Crude oil up about three cents, unchanged for the most part, really getting comfortable in this 40 handle. You know, US uh, producers are not really making money at $40 a barrel. This is kind of the break even for the Middle East, really, is uh, right in and around $40. They start kind of uh, making some pennies on the side for the most part. So crude oil starting to find a groove right here at this $40. Uh, it seems to me that it, it would want to roll over with the shutdown going on a little bit longer than what was current or earlier expected, I should say, but current. Uh, markets are pricing in $40 as we speak. So we go on to the bonds, bonds up 14 points and back into that 180 handle I've talked so much about. And we just got a little tick higher as of today to make that point of control 180. I've been talking about it basically since uh, April that that was probably since the pandemic basically that this was going to be where the sweet spot in bonds was. We aren't seeing a whole lot of changing of hands where we're seeing the trade volume happen, but that time node is very important because it shows that there is acceptance of value at that 180 handle. And I've talked about it, interest rates are not gonna go up anytime soon. So it seems like that's where they should be. Gold futures still holding on to 118, or sorry, 1800, I should say, up $7 on the day. Again, uh, dollar weakness, Continued stimulus package possibly coming out. Another round of stimulus could weaken the dollar even more. That's going to give a little bit of a lift to gold futures as it is dollar denominated. So weakness in the dollar is transferred into the safe haven asset of gold. All right, VIX is coming off uh, by about 86 cents right now on the day. Uh, below yesterday, or sorry, Friday, we got below that 200 day moving average. So is this going to be where we head back into the teens. Remember, we used to say back into the teens was a pretty big deal. Now going back into the teens seems like uh, premiums will be super cheap. Uh, I've been talking about it is the 20, 30 handle, 20 and 30 handle, the new paradigm for VIX. Well, uh, this starting to look a little bit weak as we start pulling back equities feeling pretty strong today, other than the Dow Jones. You know, I've been talking about the Dow Jones being the one that's probably going to see a little bit of uh, strength, not seeing that today, as the Dow Jones is really going to be that recovery story. And, um, you know, with the NASDAQ being the stay at home, it's done very well, is pushing again today, led by the FANG stocks as well. So uh, starting to see a push back into that tech sector for the stay at home. Is that because we're seeing more and more K 
cases of coronavirus and uh, some hospitals basically going to capacity, that very well could be what is driving this market that these guys are going to do very well. Now, we are heading into earnings this week and next week are very important for earnings. As a matter of fact, this week we get uh, like Amazon, Intel uh, next week uh, or and Microsoft. So Microsoft, Azul is probably going to be the driving force for that, but it's going to be interesting to see after they come out with these earnings. I think that like some of these, Amazon, Microsoft are going to do very well. How they react afterwards, and yes, it's going to be a lot of the statement from uh, the earnings calls as to what their forward guidance is, I think probably more important than what the actual earnings call is, but that forward guidance, how they are reacting to uh, what's down the road is going to be key. If these markets start fading, even though they've come out with pretty good earnings and uh, a good statement in their earnings call, then I would start to say that my thesis on those tech stocks being a little bit overdone to the upside are going to start wanting to roll over or trade sideways as the Dow Jones and possibly S&P start catching up to the NASDAQ. So still led by the tech sector, the stay at home trade is really driving the NASDAQ and kind of making the uh, Dow Jones, which is Dow Jones and the E-mini S&Ps for the most part, um, are going to be the recovery trade or the opening up of the economy and the um, uh, economy starting to kick back in kind of trade. All right, E-mini S&Ps are positive on the day. Moving up against the 76 Fibonacci that I have right here, that also lines up quite nicely with the value area high. So we are going to lose some momentum uh, in and around that area. Now, if we can bust above that 3250 handle, uh, 3250, then we should see a spike in E-mini S&Ps is that will catch some of the shorts on their heels and the market could really go to pop and test those all times high, all time high at around 3,400. E-mini S&Ps on the breakdown, here we have the 30 minute chart, overnight inventory, pretty flat coming into today. Uh, you know, we can see they got short and flushed themselves out for the most part, but coming into the day, we started seeing some push to the upside as uh, there is some more risk on trade going on. Now, I talked about coming up this week, we do have earnings. Now, in the morning, we have Philip Morris. Uh, I think Philip Morris is, even though they're having a weak day today, probably gonna do pretty good uh, as a stay at home kind of trade. Think about it, people sitting at home are probably uh, puffing on cigarettes and uh, other things that Philip Morris provides for uh, the stay at home trade. People in the office probably aren't smoking very much, but if they're staying at home and they can smoke and stuff like that, they might be consuming more is what I'm thinking with this trade here. I don't know if I'm going to play this to the upside, but it is um, the start of the earnings season. So I might put something on here to the upside for Philip Morris. I haven't really quite decided at this point, but later on this afternoon is really where I'm going to be pulling the ripcord on that if I do something. All right. Coca-Cola also coming out with earnings tomorrow morning. I'm not going to do anything with this. If you guys remember, I have on a pretty decent sized position in Coca-Cola. It is also a recovery trade. 50% of their sales are done through restaurants, bars, stadiums, stuff like that. Um, I kind of got into this a little bit earlier, uh, a little early, I should say, and it's pretty much trended sideways. It's going to really be about their uh, their earnings call more so than their earnings release, if you will. I don't think that they're going to be knocking it out of the park with their earnings, but really what they were talking about, the reopen trade is going to be what uh, drives this market. And I'm going to leave it on through this earnings event and not really uh, do any, um, any options on it. Now, tomorrow morning, right after the open, I might throw on some covered calls, things of that nature, depending on how the underlying is acting during that uh, earnings event. So I'm going to try and play that. The reason why I'm I'm trying to just lower my overall cost basis on this trade that I have on and uh, I'll try to take advantage of some of that volatility coming out right after the open. So I'm going to try and play that 
as well. So both of those are really the only thing that comes out. But then in the afternoon uh, or going into uh, Wednesday, we have United Airlines, Texas Instruments, Snap, uh, Biogen later on. Uh, we got Chipotle this week, Microsoft, like I mentioned, Amazon, Intel. So a pretty busy week. And then going into next week, we've got a plethora of other earnings that we can play. So I'm not going to add anything to my portfolio other than gearing up for these earnings and uh, implementing options around that volatility crush we see for earnings. So if you haven't watched any of my videos on how to trade earnings, go check those out of Pro Trader Strategies because we are going into full swing for earnings and it is imperative you know what the guidelines for trading options around earnings are okay so check that out that's all i got for you other than please take a moment to go over our disclaimer here we are an educational company i'm not trying to solicit you guys to jump on board with me during this earnings season or any of my other trades what we're here to do is teach you guys how to think for yourself and trade on your own so Please take a moment, go over this, and then go over to Pro Trader Strategies and sign up for some of those option courses. All right. So if you can't take that, take it easy.